Hi guys, welcome back to Engineers YouTube channel and I'm Patricia Bermudez and I will be your host again for today's video. So for today's video, we will be discussing another closed system type of problem and for this problem, it is adiabatic. So the problem states that a sample of nitrogen of mass 3.12 grams at 23 degrees Celsius is allowed to expand reversibly and adiabatically from 400 cubic centimeters to 2 cubic decimeter. What is the work done by the gas? So here, it is an adiabatic system. And the formula for work in an adiabatic system is from this equation. We know that Q plus W is equals to delta U. But for adiabatic, we know that Q is zero, right? So this will get canceled off. And work then becomes delta U, and the, the formula for that is NCV delta T. So yeah, we have to assume things first here. Because we cannot use CV for just any other gas. So first, CV, we have to assume that nitrogen, nitrogen, sorry, nitrogen is ideal. And the sample is an ideal gas. So nitrogen is ideal. And nitrogen, we know, the formula for that is N2, which is diatomic. And the CV here for diatomic is 5 over 2 R. Okay? So yeah, nakapag assume na tayo. And the next thing that we'll do is to list down the given values. So, here, given natin yung mass, which is 3.12 grams of nitrogen. And then we have T1, which is 23 degrees Celsius. T2 natin is a known. Wala. Kasi, but we have to use it later kasi delta T. So change the temperature T2 minus T1. Pero walang T2. We have to find that later. So, ang next na given is volume. So, we have V1, which is 400 cubic centimeter. And V2 is equals to 2 cubic decimeter. But um, we're going to use adiabatic ratios here. And what we will use is T1, V1, gamma minus 1, is equals to T2, V2, gamma minus 1. Since T2 is unknown, the formula for that is T2 is equals to T1 V1 gamma minus 1 over V2 gamma minus 1. Simplifying, we have T2 is equals to T1 V1 V one minus V1 over V2 gamma minus 1. Kasi yung T2 yung subject mo, diba? This one will retain. Tapos ilalagay mo yung V2 sa ilalim. Ito siya. And then pwede mo siyang ilagay um, sa parenthesis. V1 over V2 kasi they share the same exponent which is gamma minus 1. So ngayon, we can use the, these two values for volume to find T2. But the units are different. So for it to be consistent, we have to convert it into um, a common unit. Okay, So V1 here, you know, is 400 cm cubed. And we know that cm cubed is equals to milliliters, right? So it's equals to 400 milliliters. And we know that 400 milliliters divided by 1,000 is 0 0.4 liters, okay? And the V2 decimeter na siya. We have to know that 2 cubic decimeter is also equals to 2 liters. Okay? Yan ang conversion factor natin, okay? So now that we have these two, na same na ng unit, um, the next step is to find T2. Okay? So T2 here is equals to T1. But first, we have to use, uh, we have to convert it into Kelvin. Okay? Kasi we cannot use ratios of temperatures that are, that are not absolute temperatures. Celsius and Fahrenheit are not absolute temperatures. Only Kelvin and Rankine. Okay? Kasi yung Kelvin and Rankine, they start from zero. So, now, we're, we're dealing with Kelvin and Celsius, right? So, for 23 degrees Celsius, we have to add 273.15 
in order for it to become Kelvin. So 23 plus 273.1515 Kelvin. Tapos yung uh, ratio ng volume, which is uh, yung V1 natin is 0 0.4 liters over 2 liters. Tapos yung gamma natin for a diatomic is 1.4, 7 over 5. So yung uh, 1.4 minus 1. Yung CV natin is 5 over 2, right? Yung CP naman, if you want to um, get the value for gamma, it's this one for diatomic. CP is 7 over 2. R. Tapos yung CV natin is 5 over 2 R. So, gamma is CP over CV, which is 7 over 2 R over 5 over 2 R. So, makakancel yung R, makakancel din yung over 2, titira 7 over 5. And 7 over 5 is 1.4. Okay? So, ayan na. Yung value natin for equation natin for T2. So, calculating, we'll have 3 plus 273.15 times 0 0.4 over 2 raised to 1.4 minus 1. We have 155. 155.56924. Kelvin. But you see P1 here is in degree Celsius. So, we have to convert this back into degree Celsius para consistent again yung units. So, minus natin, pabalik yung 273.15 and ang T2 natin in degree Celsius is negative 117.5807581 degree Celsius. So, now complete na yung values natin. We have M, we have T1, T2, V1, V2. And now T2, right? So, ang formula natin, again, is work is equals to kasi eto, expansion siya. When it's an expansion, it is negative work. So, ang formula natin for this is actually negative NCV delta T. Okay? Negative NCV delta T. And your N, so work, your N natin, we can use it, we can calculate it from the mass given. So it's 3.12 grams of nitrogen times, um, in one mole of nitrogen, there is 28 grams. Why? Because one nitrogen is 14 grams, right? And since it is N2, it is 14 times 2, so 28. And then N, then CV, which we have 5 over 2. And then yung R natin, gamitin na lang natin yung 8.314. Kasi yung unit natin for work is actually joules. Diba? And itong um, universal gas constant na to is already in joules. Joules per mole Kelvin. Okay? And then yung T2 natin is negative 117.5. 807581 plus yung T1 natin is 23. 23. And then it's in Kelvin. Because the change in temperature in Celsius is also the change in temperature in Kelvin. So from here, we can see that the units will cancel off each other, like grams here. And then, maka cancel matitira yung mole. And then yung mole maka cancel din dito. And yung Kelvin maka cancel din dito. Ang matitira mo ay joules. So, what is our answer? Work is 0.12 by 28. Oh, have you, I forgot the negative sign here. Don't forget. Kasi expansion siya. Okay? Expansion, it is negative work. Kasi the work is done by the system. Yung system mo yung lumalaki. Kaya yung, yung work, nagdi-decrease. Kasi siya yung gumagawa ng work. Pag compression naman, on the other hand, the work is positive. Kasi the work is done on the system by the surroundings. Kapag work is done on the system, tataas yung work mo. Kasi yung work nga ay napupunta doon sa system. Kaya siya positive. Okay? So yung work here is negative 3.12 divided by 28 times 5 over 2 times 8.314 times negative 117.5807 
581 minus 23. We have negative 325.5910606 joules. So that is our answer for the problem. So the work is done here is like this. So yep, I hope you learned a lot again from today's video. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for the next one. Bye.